Hi, I'm Brendan Nichols with Paychex. I head up the client relationships with manufacturers here in the Chicagoland area, and I work with them quite closely to help them improve the bottom line, increase compliance, reduce administrative burden, and help them become an employer of choice. Quickly about Paychex, uh, we've been around for over 40 years. Nationwide, we have close to 570,000 clients, with many of those being manufacturers. What we do is we offer the best of both worlds. We give you the strength and, and financial solvency of a large publicly traded company, yet we're local, so we give you that one-to-one -one support. So that's a little bit about paychecks and why I'm talking with you today and focusing on the topic of compliance. And I'm going to give you a couple ideas on compliance strategies. Why is this important? Well, there's a lot of changes going on right now uh, between the employee and employer relationship, between healthcare reform, between all the various governmental agencies. The IRS recently just came out and shifted their focus to companies in the middle market from 10 to $100 million because they're looking to recoup quite a bit of, of, of cost to pay for these programs. So what does that mean for you? It means that it's more important than ever to stay within the white lines of, of, the, of the compliance road. And uh, the penalties can be fairly substantial for not complying. A uh, recent example, uh, in Peoria, there was a company that was fined, proposed fine of $317,000. What was the fine for? Well, for not doing something as simple as putting safety guards around the equipment. But that wasn't the biggest blow to the company. Another consequence of that was that an uh, employee actually got fatally crushed. That's terrible. Another example, up in Rockford, you know, you think big companies have it all figured out. Well, OSHA found out that Lowe's did not keep good uh, record keeping requirements in terms of accidents, and they were fined $182,000. And in the environment that we're in right now, it's important to be aware of these things, not to scare, but because a lot of businesses, and perhaps yourself included, it's hard to absorb something like this. So I'm going to talk a little bit about a couple strategies that we can put in place. The number one tip for increasing your compliance is to reduce your liability. I know it sounds simple, but especially these days, companies are required to do more with less or more with the same. And any time you could take a business function, delegate it off, shift that burden to somebody else, that's usually a good thing. You know, a couple examples, uh, payroll. You know, it's the one area of your company that doesn't make you money, it just takes money. And recently, through the uh, Illinois Department of Employment Securities, they instituted monthly reporting requirements, where before it was only quarterly. That's one example of some of the changes that are happening, which is requiring more administration from internal staff. But it's also a lot more exposure, because if you're doing these things manually, then it's like running a red light. You know, it's a matter of time before something, something happens. And, you know, the IRS doesn't care if Sally's out one day because, you know, she was sick and maybe you had to take over or your, or your purchasing person had to take over. Somebody that, normally do, somebody that normally doesn't handle that function. You know, the IRS there, because they're shifting their focus, they're looking at these things. So um, taking functions of your business, outsourcing to somebody that can remove liability is usually a great idea. Um, there's a lot of other changes coming up too, especially in 2014. Illinois Conceal and Carry, medical marijuana. Now the Illinois Manufacturers Association is, is fantastic about providing you a lot of guidance around these, but internally, what are you doing about it? You know, do, is your handbook reflecting some of these changes? Are you prepared for these things? And when it comes to compliance, you know, utilizing maybe uh, an employment law attorney or an HR consultant to put some context and infrastructure around how you can protect yourself when these things come into play, plus all the other things that are happening right now. Um, what you'll find is that you can be proactive rather than reactive, but it's all about, you know, seeing what's, what's out ahead and catching it before it happens to you. You know, the FLSA. Fair Labor Standards, uh, they're very hard on, on things like wage and overtime requirements. And, you know, when you have certain things like, um, you know, manual records, which I'm going to lead into in a moment, it can really open yourself up to, you know, them knocking on your door and saying, hey, 
do you have Joe's you know wage and hour records from three years ago? Because he's coming to us saying he doesn't have you know the right amount of pay. If you can produce those documents on the fly, that's excellent. You know, if if you're trying to capture all this information yourself and store it manually and and do things like that, um, a lot of times that can work. But there might be a better way, and and outsourcing some of these functions, whether it's to a person or or upgrading your system can prove to have quite a bit of benefits. My next tip for increasing compliance for manufacturers is to keep perfect records. When was the last time you, you went to look for something and it wasn't there? Well, a lot of times it, it pops up. Unfortunately though, employee files, these things don't tend to, to turn up as easily, especially when you need them. Like when you have a knock on the door and you get audited or, or something of that nature. Now. There's federal and there's state requirements for record keeping and retention. Uh, Illinois has certain requirements and, and the federal government has certain requirements. I would encourage you to email me. I have all of these guidelines outlined in a document I can send over to you. But what the idea is behind record keeping and, and retention is, you know, everything, every different governmental agency requires different information, whether it's the IRS, whether it's the EEOC, whether it's the FLSA, uh, Department of Labor, and they're, they're very strict on, on how long you're supposed to keep certain records, even after an employee's termination. Now, you know, when a company gets exposed or an employee is disgruntled and, you know, there's uh, a further investigation, bad things can happen, unfortunately. You know, here in Illinois, there was a, a case of a an owner and an officer that didn't properly uh, record wage and, and overtime for a particular employee and what happened was they got fined two hundred thousand dollars for something as as simple as as that it seems pretty ridiculous but it's the reality one more example you know back in march uh, you probably heard all the i9 forms got updated and you know, hopefully that was part of part of part of your plan, um, because if not, you know, the fines could be as little as $110 per per incorrect form, up to tens of thousands of dollars. And a quick tip is a great idea to have your I-9 form separate from the other employee files, like the W-4 and the Illinois W-4, because a lot of times government agencies will come in and look just for a particular piece of information. And if your I-9 is the only thing in that file, then that's all they're getting. Whereas if you open up, boom, and you show them the entire employee file, it's like exposing yourself to things that maybe you shouldn't have um, exposed yourself to. So uh, quick tip there. My final tip today for increasing compliance for manufacturers is something you're probably gonna love because it is something I try and apply in my life every single day, and that is simplification. I'm sure we've all heard of the KISS principle, keep it simple. But the idea is, you know, having access to, to the right things at the right time in the easiest format possible. One area that I work a lot with manufacturers, uh, one area is, is creating more operating leverage internally. And that's, you know, helping them do more with, with less resources or more with the same resources or even doing the same with less resources. So now that I've thoroughly confused you, what does that, what does that really mean? Well, you know, centralizing some of your uh, human capital processes. And what does that mean exactly? Well, you know, with a lot of the manufacturers I, I work in, it, it's, it's great to see maybe the human resources department and finance together, but that's not always the case. Sometimes they're in different areas of, of the building. And what happens is because of all the changes going on right now with uh, employees, uh, employer requirements, and that, that integration between, okay, if it's happening in payroll, we need to update that in HR and vice versa. Sometimes if you don't have the right system in place, the right hand doesn't know what the left hand is doing. And that's totally unintentional. But what can happen is, you know, that creates a lot of burden on on staff, whether it's you know double, triple checking things to make sure it's it's correct because the systems aren't talking to each other, um, whether that's just manual entry. I mean, you know, a lot of your employees, especially kind of at that level, they didn't go to college to fill in spreadsheets. 
you know, they went to college to kind of utilize an expertise in organizational development or uh, cost projections, budgeting, not sit there and do data entry. So um, look, at, look at things like this, you know, centralize your database where you enter one thing in one area and it carries over into the next. These are things I help manufacturers with, so I have some more ideas there. Um, when it comes to, to simplifying, you know, don't feel like you, you need to take on everything at once. Healthcare reform is, is out there and there's going to be quite a bit of administrative and financial implications to the law. You know, thank goodness it got delayed till 2015, but it's a lot like your tax return. You know, okay, it's not due in April, but now it's due in October. Here's your extension, so what's your plan? This gives you people some great breathing room, um, but it's a very complex law. I mean, you stand it on its head, it's seven feet tall, you know, 22,000 pages. So one thing that a lot of manufacturers are adopting is technology to simplify the entire process. And what, is, what does that really look like? Well, with all the different rules, with all the communication requirements that are being um, required for employees, and all the things that are becoming, you know, through 2014, especially 2015 when those fines start hitting, you know, how are you going to be, once again, within those white lines of the road? And one thing that I'm working with uh, manufacturers on, and, you know, definitely explore this on your own, is um, using a system that not only can help you with some of the administration to handle these requirements, but there are rules built in. So I rarely use the term dummy proof, but you know, there are systems that will say, uh, uh you can't do this, you need to do this. And utilizing that with the expertise of, of your health insurance broker can a lot of times bring peace of mind to what might be a, an overwhelming uh, process anyways. Uh, so centralizing your database, use technology where appropriate, and, and reach out and, and have a conversation. So um, I'm certainly available at any time to discuss some of these things. These are just three of the most prevalent topics I'm speaking with manufacturers on. There are a lot more, but that's what I thought would be most important today. And if you'd like more information, please contact me directly. Brendan Nichols with Paychex. I'm out of the Naperville office. I handle all the relationships around the state, and I'm more than happy to speak with you at any time. So shoot me an email, give me a call, I'll put my cell phone up there, and I look forward to talking with you.